So you were just speaking about how you are going to be or your new teacher. You are speaking about it. Good morning, Inka Padhi Nishan and the good afternoon. Ke. Good morning. I hope you are all having a good time. Thank you, Amaya, for inviting me wherever she is. Thank you, Amaya, for inviting me. Thank you, Sri Charan. That was a wonderful speech. Spoke from the heart. Spoke very passionately. Proud of you and all, the, all, all of your achievements. Many, many congratulations. Professor Sita Ramarao Garu, Gaurav Nilu Mana. Ambedkar Open University Vice Chancellor Garu, Parito Patu, E. Karakramam Lo, Telugu Martyr Pilanandar, Telugu Rani Valar, anybody who is a non Telugu speaker here? Oh, plenty of you guys. So I'll speak to English then, yeah? I'll stick to English. Alright, so when I got an invite from Ameya, and when she told me that uh, the summit would be called Key Makers, I asked her one thing and one thing alone. I said, um, so these keys that you're trying to make, you know, where are the locks? She said, uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean? I said, uh, key makers, and I, in, in my, when I was growing up in Hyderabad, I went to a school called St. George's Grammar in Abbots. And uh, when I used to walk on the footpath of Abbots, we used to have all these chabi banane wale, key makers, you know, right? So I asked her, are you talking about those key makers? Or are you talking about something else? She said, no, sir. We are going to solve the problems of the world. We are going to come out with some unique solutions. We are going to throw up challenges. We are actually going to have a lot of young people congregate, come together, think about what are the, what are the challenges that we face as young people. And we will try and come out with some rock solid solutions that will have a huge societal impact. So I am delighted, honored to be here. My apologies for showing up late because uh, you know, I was stuck somewhere else, but I am delighted to be here. Haven't done this in a while, after elections in fact, uh, uh, I am not part of the state cabinet anymore, so I have not, be, not, not had an opportunity to interact with many, many of you off late. But let me tell you, these are exciting times, these are very, very exciting times. This is an exciting time to be a young person in India, never before in our history was a better time to be young. This is the best times to be young, in fact, like I mentioned. So much to look forward, so much to dream, so much to aspire for and so much to achieve. There is a sense of optimism across India today, which is all pervasive. Today's youngsters in India are not bogged down by the baggage of our past. You, have, you guys have no memory of, of the infamous 19... 50s and 1960s low growth rates. You have no low growth rates. You have no memory of the times when we used to get only one single channel on television. Where in fact, growing up as a kid, I used to watch Chitrahar and all that. I don't know if any of you even know about Chitrahar or no single channel television sets anymore, but that was the time we grew up in. You have no such baggage, you have no such memories. You have no memory of long waiting periods of months and years to get a telephone connection at home, or those long queues which we saw so often to even get a train ticket or to get onto a train, to hop onto a train. You have, like I said, no memory of any famines or epidemics hitting our towns and villages where thousands of people have lost their lives. This was all a thing of the past. The present India today is a transformed place. It is a place which is transforming really, really quickly and really, really rapidly. It is a place where we hope for things to get better every day. Like Sri Charan put it, one step at a time, making sure your family is taken care of, making sure your vicinity is taken care of, making sure your neighborhood is taken care of and thereby making sure our towns, our cities, our villages, our state and eventually by extension our country is taken care of. It is a place, the current India, where we hope for things to get better every day in technology, in infrastructure, in employment, in economy and also more importantly in equal opportunity. 
We can see this growth with our own eyes. Right now, India, according to numbers, according to statistics, is growing at 6.5% 6 or more. It is now the sixth largest economy in the world. Its per capita income, India's per capita income is growing at about 5.5% a year. And good news is, India's large population. I remember a time when I was growing up, when I was in school. You know, we had this association called FPAI, the Family Planning Association of India, which used to do massive campaigns, which used to run massive uh, publicity campaigns, make, wanting to make sure that India controls its population ex explosion. But good news is, India's large population is, no matter, is not a matter of concern anymore. A population is now stabilized. It is growing at 1.2 percent, much lower than what it is, what it was two decades ago. In fact, India now has so many young people that this is now called the demographic dividend. Just to give you a sense of uh, what I'm saying, if you look at India today, 1.32 billion people, more than 50 percent of India is less than the age of 27. More than 65% of India is less than the age of 35. So imagine the kind of opportunity, the kind of optimism, the kind of entrepreneurial spirit that can really take India to the next level, provided we all aspire and we all collectively put our intellect together. At one point of time, India's population was cons considered to be a bane, but now like I pointed out, this demographic dividend, this young India today, in a knowledge economy, can be called it's a huge blessing and a boon for the entire country and also by extension for the entire world. Population dividend in, in uh, popular parlance is nothing but young people coming together, is nothing but large demographic dividend that I talked about, is nothing but all of you coming together, putting your collective intellect to make sure you come out with solutions for popular good and for societal benefit. We cannot help but notice that the youth of this generation are a brave lot. I was just hearing, I mean, I just had the opportunity to uh, you know, uh, hear Sri Charan speak for the first time. The, the most impressive thing about that speech, the most impre impressive thing about how he presented to Max to you was fearlessness. There was no fear. You know, they say public speaking, in fact, according to a survey, not, it's not uh, me saying this, public speaking is apparently, you know, the most dreaded thing in the world, even more dreaded than death itself. But what I really liked about his speech was that he was fearless. He had, he had no fear. In fact, one piece of advice, because many of you I'm sure while you want to create employment, while you want to create more jobs by being entrepreneurs, some of you may also end up being job seekers. The one biggest thing, the one biggest thing that is going to help you in achieving your goals, achieving your dreams is being fearless. When you go for an interview, ye man ke chalo, ye man ke interview table pe pahunch jao, interview room mein pahunch jao, ki agar mujhe naukri nahi milti hai, to uska loss hai, mera loss kuch nahi hai. It is that person who's going to interview, me, who is going to be at the receiving end, who is going to actually, you know, lose out by not hiring me. That's exactly what he was pointing out. You know, when he said, please send a text to somebody if you want to intern, saying, if you don't hire me, you're going to lose out. That should be the spirit. Because when you walk in with that kind of mindset, that you have nothing to lose, that you have nothing to fear, then the real you comes out. The conversation that you have to yourself, that you normally have with yourself, that will come to the fore, that will enable you. That will help you in being fearless, in communicating extremely, extremely uh, uh, potently. The future of India, and I'm sure you've heard this many, many times in the past, the future of India is most definitely in your hands. One of the founding fathers of the United States of America, Thomas Jefferson, he said, apparently, he believed that each generation looks at itself as a distinct nation. If we go by what he believed, with so many young people in our country in India, we are looking at a completely different and transformed India. It is a new India altogether. 
there is a great sense of optimism, yes. There is, you know, uh, like I said, you know, this generation doesn't hold itself back. My young son, you know, who's 13, you know, he is, I mean, when I was growing up, I can relate to that age and, you know, that, at that time. When I was 13 or 14, if I had to speak to my father, I would be extremely, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't say I would be, you know, I would be scared, but I would definitely think twice and be very circumspect before saying anything or before uttering anything that might, you know, not, not, not be very respectful. But today, my young son who's 13 doesn't think twice, you know, doesn't hold back. When it comes to sharing his feelings, when it comes to sharing, saying something directly to my face, whether or not that is something that I would like or not, he wouldn't think twice. Now, I would, I would say our youth is far more literate today than any previous generation and more importantly, the economy is also growing rapidly as you grow, as you grow, you know, not older, but as you grow, grow in, your, uh, in, your, in your careers as well. But the fact is, we still have many challenges and our Chief Minister, our Honourable, our Honourable Chief Minister, Shri K. Chandrasekhar Rao Garu, you know, when I was a part of his team as a, a Minister for Information Technology, he always used to ask me one thing. He said, you know, when, whenever we went to him with new solutions, whenever we started talking about T-Hub or startups or, you know, um, uh, anything, that is, anything that is fancy in terms of technology, he used to ask one question pointedly. He used to say, will this actually have a positive impact on the society? Will this solve a problem that I currently face as a, in, in my day-to-day -day life as a common citizen? If the answer is no, then you might as well, you know, rethink about how you know, you would come out with your next solution or next entrepreneurial idea. Fact is, India as a country today has, a, has n number of challenges. For those of you who are looking for entrepreneurial ideas, for wanting to do something, something uh, which is uh, going to not just benefit you, but also the country, you might want to start looking around. For instance, when I became a minister in the initial days, when uh, we were sitting together as a team, we said, Okay, what can we do using technology to solve the problems of a common man? You know, I'm sure many of you here have your own motorbikes and you ride them to college and back home and to a lot of other places as well, right? When you typically ride a bike or, you know, drive a car, you know, police, a traffic cop will stop you once in a while and will basically check for all the papers that you're supposed to carry, a registration card, an insurance paper, and of course your driver's license. So in initial days, when we uh, assumed office, when the new state of Telangana came into being, we said, how can we solve this problem? So we, we threw this challenge at one of our young startups here, who walked up and said, I might come out with a solution. The startup was called Radical Tribe, and they came out with a solution. They came out with a, a digital wallet, and, our, and we called it M Wallet, a mobile wallet. The Road Transport Authority immediately liked it. So along with the traffic police, along with the transport authorities, this young startup came out with a solution. So as long as you had a, a smartphone, you could have all these three pieces of paper, three pieces of document, all stored electronically on your phone. So whenever a traffic cop stopped you next time, all you had to do was flash your phone, and if he had a reader which could scan through, then immediately you were off. So these are the small ingenious, small, you know, interventions which will make your startup idea, an extremely successful one. Let me tell you, this application, this app has been downloaded, downloaded, the RTA M wallet has been downloaded more than 20 lakh times already. So that goes to show you the power of the small utility which can help, you know, ease the pain point of a common citizen and at the same time give a huge fillip to your entrepreneurial idea. See, today's youngsters, all of you, you're not content in only being a job seeker, like the generations before. You're not content in securing a government job for life. You're not content in actually staying in a job for very long. You know, we used to have lifers. You know, whenever I meet some people who say, I've spent 30 years in, you know, government service, or 30 years in Mahindra and Mahindra, or, you know, 25 years in Ashok Leland. And when I share that experience with some young people like you, There are, Sri Charan just pointed out, 
there are, you know, the Zuckerbergs, there are Steve Jobs of the world. Let me tell you one thing and let, and let me admit to this of the world. Let me tell you one thing and let, and let me admit to this unabashedly also without, without uh, you know, thinking twice. I have lived in the United States for about eight years. I have lived in many other countries also for some time. World over today, Indians as a, as a nation, in, Indians as, as uh, uh, you know, intellectual people are acknowledged, are accepted. The world understands that we have great problem solving abilities. The world acknowledges that we are fantastic when it comes to analytical skills. The world acknowledges a lot of things about us. That's why you have a Sundar Pichai running Google. You have a Satya running Microsoft. You have many, many others. Ajay Banga running the MasterCard. I can go on. There are many, many people who are either chief executives or the managing directors or fantastic you know, uh, people who are running large multinationals. But unfortunately, at the same time, the world does not think very much of Indians when it comes to entrepreneurial capabilities. So if you look around, you have a Zuckerberg, who I don't think he's even completed his uh, you know, uh, graduation. You also have many, many other entrepreneurs who may not have done a great deal. In fact, Travis Kalanick, you know, the guy who founded Uber. Many of you use Uber. How many of you use Uber here? Or many of you? And how many of you use Ola? Equally. Good. See, where Travis was here. Travis Kalanick is the founder of uh, Uber. He was here in Hyderabad to launch something. So I asked him, I said, how did you come up with this idea of Uber? You know? He said, you know, me and my friend back in 2009, we were in Paris one day. We went out clubbing. We went out to a pub. And, uh, you know, we were out until 2 a.m. in the morning. And then eventually we all decided to head home. We walked out and we kept hailing for a cab. It just, you know, nobody would stop. Almost half an hour later, the friend who was standing next to me said, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you could hail a cab at a click of a button? That was a trigger. That was a trigger for the whole idea of Uber. And today, it is the world's largest, world's wealthiest startup, Uber. It's one of the largest in the world. Point I'm trying to make is, you know, these are, it's, it's not like you have to come out with a, with an earth-shattering invention. No. Look around. Be receptive to ideas. Be receptive to challenges. Once you start looking around, once you start identifying opportunities, then you'll realize, then you'll realize that in every challenge, there is a hidden opportunity. In every problem that you see right in front of you, staring at you, there is an opportunity for you to innovate. There is an opportunity for you to disrupt. And let me also say this, and this might not sound very good, but nevertheless, you need not be original all the time. You could even be, see for example, there is an Amazon. But then there is a Flipkart, there is a Snapdeal, there is a Mitra. The model is the same, but they've cut, customized it. They've tweaked it a bit to suit our Indian mindset, to suit our Indian needs and Indian conditions. So you need not be original all the time. It's all about giving that one little tweak, one little you know, uh, spin on how that can be customized to our needs and to our situations. Now, let me also quickly say one thing, and I think this is what has been said by somebody very, very important, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure somebody who you all look up to, Spider-Man. What did he say? With great power comes... Wow, you know Spider-Man like I don't, anyways. But at the same time, at the same time, you cannot be reckless, you cannot be irresponsible. Meaning, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to preach, I'm not trying to give you a lesson in morality, but I can just tell you, you cannot disinherit your, disinherit your culture, your language, your stories or your history. Exactly like what Sri Charan said, you may not be, you, you see, you, know, you may not be able to converse very well in English. You may not be able to be one of the best speakers there is in English. You may not be very fluent in English. That doesn't matter. That does not matter. Look at China. China, again, is similar to India in so many things. You know, in terms of size, in terms of uh, the number of people, in terms of, uh, you know, the geographical expanse, etc. And look at the wealth they have created. Look at the number of entrepreneurs who may not be even speaking English, but the kind of products they have come out with, the kind of amazing, amazing stuff that they have come out with, the kind of global benchmarking solutions that they have come out with. That is a lesson for us right there. And in fact, 
use your diversity use the diversity in india as a huge opportunity you know india has just to remind you we are a very heterogeneous country you all know that everything everything changes every 150 200 kilometers the language the culture the cuisine the eating habits the dialect everything changes every 150 kilometers so there in lies a huge opportunity if you are able to address the 900 million indians out there who do not speak english in their own vernacular language come out with solutions for them in telugu in tamil in marathi in punjabi in bengali in tulu in languages that do not even have a script there in lies a huge opportunity you need not be very conversant very fluent in english that is not that is not something that will make you an entrepreneur you your english your english speaking skills is not something that will make you a successful entrepreneur your ability to be ingenious when it comes to identifying an opportunity is what is going to make the difference but for that to happen you know you need to be grounded you need to be you need to be you need to be connected to the world that you live in you cannot be isolated now let me quickly sum up even in telangana in the state like charan pointed out we created the hub which again is a platform for you to come and innovate it's not just a building it's not just cool interiors it is a platform for you to come collaborate to network to basically mingle with other youngsters who are looking to do something and innovate the other thing we want to done which we are extremely proud of is called rich the research and innovation circle of hyderabad it is also equally important since we are in ambedkar open university since we also have a lot of researchers working at this university and also a number of other wonderful institutions across hyderabad it is also important for us to realize a lot of academic research that happens in our universities that happens in our centers of excellence unfortunately is not worth commercialization now this is something of a challenge which we need to address as well because if you look at the world if you look at the stanfords harvards mits and other wonderful universities of the world you realize that many many entrepreneurs in fact have come up come out of these universities from their research from the billions of dollars that they spent on research unfortunately in india while we do not have luxury of right we do not have a problem of luxury of ideas we do have a problem of poverty of capital you know so therefore we may not as governments be able to give our universities great deal of funding when it comes to research and development but we certainly can collaborate with the private sector that's why we came out with an idea called rich now rich is basically about all about bringing in collaboration between industry academia and the private sector as well so that this continuum of wanting to encourage more and more innovation wanting to create more and more products and more and more entrepreneurial ideas which will have a large societal impact also you know gets a huge fillip for those job seekers for those of you who want to be a job seeker for those of you who would rather be a job seeker we have also created what is called as task telangana academy for skill and knowledge now again this is more like a finishing school where you can walk in and basically spruce up and hone your communication skills and other skills as well we have also established tsic the telangana state innovation cell this again can help you if you are if you have an idea if you have some kind of an innovation you can work cohesively with other like minded innovators and come out with something especially when it comes to rural innovators or social innovators we would strongly encourage i would strongly encourage you to work with tsic the telangana state innovation cell which again is headed by a gentleman called fanindra sama who is the founder of red bus he is a guy from um, uh, nizamabad you know youngster from nizamabad who went to bangalore who was working like uh, like uh, uh, sricharan in wipro or i think it was kakatiya uh, kakatiya sandbox of course but prior to that Kakatiya uh, Sandbox, of course. But prior to that, he was actually working at Wipro in Bangalore, and then he chanced upon this idea. He again, same thing like Travis. He wanted to book a bus to his hometown, Nizamabad. But what is it? He wanted to book a bus uh, to his hometown, Nizamabad. Unfortunately, he did not find a great solution online. So he created what is called as Red Bus. dot com. dot in, I think it is. And now today, it is again valued. 
quite handsomely and he's making a good exit as well. So he's heading our TSIC. Uh, uh, recognized. I also want to talk about two last things and then I'll quit. We've also launched for young women here in this room. We've also launched in this very campus. In fact, I think it must be right next door. What is called a V-Hub, Women Entrepreneurs Hub. So if you're keen on working with other women entrepreneurs, other women, other young women, again, this is an opportunity. We can connect you to them as well. We also are going We've also launched this very campus, in fact, I think it must be right next door. What is called as V Hub, Women Entrepreneurs Hub. So if you're keen on working with other women entrepreneurs, other women, other young women, again, this is an opportunity. We can connect you to them as well. We also are going to launch what is called as T Works. Now, T Works will ensure that an innovator can translate his idea into a prototype. For those of you who are not on the technology side or not on the software side and who want to actually build something uh, you know a prototype etc into hardware you can use dworks which will also be up and running i think in about in a few months from now finally i would just sum up with one thing you know it's a cliche now to keep reminding all of you that india as a country is a young country and you are our strength etc etc but this, the time is i time i believe has come for youngsters in india now to step up to the challenge because so far along india has only been known as a country which is a back office for the rest of the world if you watch a hollywood movie or if you watch even a, a netflix uh, uh, you know series you realize that there is a lot of i wouldn't call it a smear really but i would definitely see a lot of stereotyping out there you know where people believe that you know, india is essentially a call center for the rest of the world now do we want to continue to live with the stigma, continue to live with the smear? I don't think so. We have, we are more capable than that, especially you guys. You, know, you guys are more capable than that. So my request, I urge you, I, I appeal to you that you should start looking out a bit more often around the society that we live in. You should start looking at the day-to-day -day situations that you face and possibly start exploring it as an opportunity. Look at every challenge, treat it as an opportunity. Like Sri Charan pointed out, yes, you will fail. It's not like you're going to hit, you're going to strike gold with the very first idea that you'll chance upon. You know, as, as hard as you can. And if you pursue with a single-minded focus and devotion, nothing will stop an idea whose time has come. Many congratulations to Ameya. Many congratulations to all the participants. I wish you all good luck. And I wish uh, this keynote, I'm sorry, I wish this key, the, the key makers uh, um, you know, a session here, a huge, huge success. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. You truly are an embodiment of inspiration. I hope you keep inspiring the coming generations too. Thank you so much for taking out time from your busy schedule. It really means a lot. Thank you so much for that. Now I'd like to call up Amaya to present a small token of gratitude